Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this free workshop uh, where we are going to talk all about the latest scams and how to avoid them because so many artists uh, deal with these on almost a daily basis mm -hmm. and not only is it annoying but I we wanted to do this because we just want um, everybody to be aware and um, and share our experience uh, of the scams that we faced. I'm sure there's others out there that maybe yeah. we haven't faced, but um, we wanted to share our knowledge with you. So um, we're going to give just a really brief, quick background about who we are. Uh, then we're going to go uh, right into the content and we're going to go through all kinds of different scams. Some of them you'll probably recognize. Uh, and I want you to know that this is, we have a live chat here. So uh, if you if you look, um, I guess, below this video, you'll see the chat and feel free to introduce yourself. Say hello. Uh, we have uh, Jake here uh, on the chat. Say hi, Jake, to everyone. What's up, beautiful creatives of the world? I am so excited about this live workshop because it is absolutely crucial information uh, to understand how to avoid getting scammed. So and um, yeah, it's. Ellie and Dimitra have a lot of great stuff for you guys. And at the, um, you know, at the end here too, we're going to do a Q&A. So whatever questions that you might have, maybe you've encountered a scam in your own life or there's currently somebody that's been messaging you and you wonder, is this a scam? You know, this is a great time where you can get your questions answered mm -hmm. and Dimitra and I will offer you our opinions. Um, also, speaking of opinion, I just want you to know um, everything that we're talking about today is from our personal experience, things that we have personally experienced ourselves, and they are, are our opinions uh, based on the research that we've done. So um, I just kind of want that out there, uh, you know, just for you to understand. Um, is there anything you want to say before we start? No, but I'm, you know, I'm really excited for this workshop, and I think it's going to be really helpful, especially for artists who are maybe first getting on social media or putting their themselves out there online and um, how to deal with scammers because it is, there's just so much these days and it is pretty annoying yeah. and we don't want you guys to get scammed. Yeah. Uh, okay, so just a little um, bit about me. Um, my name's Ellie Milan. I've been a professional artist since 1996 um, and have been selling my artwork since then. Um, I went, this is my husband, John, uh, one of these pictures were, it, I'm still in high school and, uh, there, and then that's, that's us, you know, as professionals. Um, so I went to art school and so did John and we, um, so we're both artists and we, um, uh, after, right after graduating from, from art school, although they told us we wouldn't be able to make a living selling our art, we did. We started making a living selling our art right away. Um, we worked in the decorative art market for many years uh, and uh, got into publishing and licensing um, and worked with dealers, art consultants, uh, galleries. Uh, then we transitioned into collectible art and started selling our artwork um, in the collectible market. And uh, throughout our career, uh, we've sold over 10,000 uh, paintings to combined. Um, so for many years, we uh, collaborated. So uh, that's two of us, you know, very prolific. Uh, in 2010, we opened Milan Art Institute uh, because I wanted to help artists make a living selling their art. There were so many artists uh, at that time that were contacting John and I and asking, you know, if we would help them or if um, we, you know, could give them tips on how they could make a living selling their art. And so that's why we wanted to open an art school uh, because we saw that there wasn't a lot of art schools out there that really actually focused on helping artists turn their passion for art into a viable profession. So uh, we created this program called the Mastery Program uh, where we could take any artist at any level and in one year, they could learn everything they need to know uh, about being a professional artist and pick up the skills, traditional skills and contemporary mixed media skills, uh, their voice, learn what their voice is, what their personal aesthetic is, create a style, and learn how to market and brand themselves. Comes with a lot of work, uh, but it's a fantastic program. So we developed that in 2014. We've been teaching um, thousands of artists ever since uh, how to have a profession as artists. 
Um, and then um, Dimitra, my daughter, she uh, uh, started teaching, what was it? It was like 2016, 17? Um, 2018. 2018. Uh, she started teaching uh, with us um, at the school because you'll hear uh, her backstory. Uh, she had a lot to offer. And I just, I wanted every artist in the world to be able to learn from her and her experience. So, and she loves it. So, uh, why don't yeah, you tell everybody so, about you? Um, just really briefly, and then we'll get into the art scams uh, content. Um, I started painting when they opened the art school. So I just, at a young age, really um, fell in love with painting. And I got my first gallery show when I was um, 14. And... Um, had this painting in there. It was in the newspaper. And then a publishing company saw that and reached out to me wanting to work with me. And um, so I started working with the publisher and I was painting so much, like 40 plus hours per week. Um, I was homeschooled, so I had a lot of free time and I just devoted myself to my painting. And um, they put my work in galleries all over, starting to sell consistently and um, then they would make prints and like limited edition prints. So I did that for a while. And in my first year working with them, we sold over a million in art. And this was in about 12 different galleries across the US. And um, after working with them for about two years, I was just starting to feel like just on this machine and just kind of like, you know, going through the motions, doing. I couldn't really grow beyond that because their business model was just dependent on galleries. And so I started to have this shift with my social media really taking off and seeing that my collectors wanted to just, you know, work with me directly, not go through galleries. So I started seeing that there was like this, you know, different path for me. And so I decided to start self-representing and sell through my website. Um, I'm still in some galleries, but I do kind of a mix of both. And right now, the majority of my sales is just purely online and through social media. And so here's some of my art today and um, what I'm doing today. And I'm also, um, like she mentioned, a co-owner of Milano Institute. And I really love helping other artists um, find their style and kind of just be able to do what they love every day and um, turn it into a business. So um, here's an overview of, you want to go over the... Yeah. Um, well, also, I just want to touch on, I think it's really important that we cover a lot of this and we expose some things and we, you know, talk about it and that there's um, platforms and forums and, and venues where artists can um, expose the scammers, right? And uh, because these days there's so many scams out there, not just for artists, but just generally. And I think the general, um, you know, sort of attitude out there is we all have mistrust. I have mistrust. You have mistrust. We don't trust what we see anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of disinformation and, you know, um, you know, news stories that maybe aren't true or they're just partially true. There's always an agenda behind things. So every email you get, you brace yourself. Oh, is this real? Is this not real? Uh, and, you know, telemarketers are constantly calling you. And, and so in, in that kind of envi online environment where there's just so many uh, scammers, it's hard to know what is real, what's a real opportunity and what isn't. And so that's what this whole thing is about. We wanted to sort of dispel some of the, some of the myths and, and expose some of the scams and um, help you to understand and navigate that. Some of the things we'll talk about aren't necessarily scams. It's just uh, giving you information so that you can question, is this really good for me? Is mm -hmm. this beneficial? Does this empower me? Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, I've been at this for a very long time uh, selling my art. And so I've seen, I've seen the scams throughout the years mm -hmm. as technology unfolds. And I've, I've experienced a lot of it. Yeah, same. Um, seen so many different types of scams. And we have all different examples to show you guys. And I'll share a story about um, earlier in my career, I got majorly scammed by someone and almost lost my whole business. So I will share that story a little bit later. Yeah, so just an overview of what we're going to cover, um, just basically three parts to this. Um, first, what can you do 
uh, really, it, it says protect your heart, but what will make you susceptible to a scam is really your internal uh, self-image as an artist. And so I want to go through that first. That's probably the most important part of this entire, um, you know, uh, presentation or workshop. Um, and then the next thing we're going to cover is how you can get savvy and you can check things out for yourself so that after this workshop, it's not just the scams that we've talked about because there's going to be new scams, mm -hmm. you know, next month there'll be, you know, the scam of the month. And, um, you have to know how to, you know, remain savvy in your art business and protect yourself and know how to really, uh, discern mm -hmm. what is a scam and what isn't. So we're going to teach you some ideas about that. And then, um, and then we're going to go through uh, various scams so that you can see the pattern and, uh, and how to avoid them. So uh, I would say this first part is just really, really important. And that is we're talking about um, your identity as an artist. So uh, there's this sort of perception out in the world of what an artist is, what an artist isn't. Um, a lot of that perception is put on us as artists and it is up to us. We are empowered to either pick up that attitude or to say, hey, that is not me and I don't align myself with that attitude. And so I want everybody watching, you know, to think about these things and, and feel empowered that you don't have to agree with them. You don't, you can, you can live as an artist in the, in the identity that you choose, not necessarily the identity that the world puts on you. So uh, I just want to tell you um, if you are an artist watching this today, here are some of the things that you are not. You are not these things. You are not desperate. You are not flaky, right? You are perfectly capable of, of being on time and following through with your uh, promises, your commissions, what, what you set out to do. Um, you are, are in, perfectly capable of being uh, professional 100% of the time. Um, you are not waiting to be discovered uh, you're not waiting for um, some agent or some, you know, uh, a gallery or or a curator to come along, discover you, put you on, you know, front and center, you know, on on the stage, and now the whole world will want your things. Uh, you are not that. That is not what you are waiting for. Um, that that is what will make you susceptible to being scammed if that is what you are waiting for. Um, you're not hoping for exposure. You're not sitting there just thinking, oh, if only I could get exposure, right? Uh, and, and you're not insecure. You, you're not, uh, you know, wallowing in self-doubt, wondering, you know, if, if this could even be possible for you. Uh, as an artist, you are not starving, right? The world would call, call you a starving artist and, and you just can't make it as an artist and go get a real job. Uh, go, go do, um, you know, uh, something, you know, serious because nobody can really make it as an artist. So those are not a part of your identity. Uh, the sooner that you can, uh, align yourself with that and identify with that or, or unidentify with that, um, the better off you will be. Uh, not only as an artist uh, and and how you feel about yourself, your purpose in life, but also you won't be susceptible to scams. Um, and here's what you are as an artist. You are fully in control of your own destiny. Okay, I really want you to believe that through and through, that you are fully in control of your own destiny. You are a change agent. So what that means is, you can change the world. Your art is powerful enough. You are powerful enough that if you put in enough hard work, if you uh, learn the skills, if you commit yourself and devote yourself to your art, you can change the world with your art. You are a change agent. Um, you are a culture shifter. It is the artists of the world that change culture. It's not the dentists. It's not the lawyers. It's not... Um, you know, uh, um, you know, house builders, right? It is the artists who change the world. It's the ones who sing the songs. It's the one who writes the poems. It is uh, the paintings that, that, that hang in people's homes. That is what changes the world. That is what shifts culture. And that is what you are. If you are a culture shifter, world changer, then you will not be scammed. You are not gonna be susceptible to scams, right? Because you're above all that. So um, you are a business owner, 
okay? That, that is who you are. You own your own art business. You are a business owner. Even if currently that's not what you, you, you know, do day to day, that is your potential. And that is absolutely uh, very easily can be your reality because you control your destiny. And if you decide that that's what you want, you can have it. Um, you are powerful. Uh, you are powerful to make your own choices. You are powerful to agree or disagree with whatever you want. You're powerful to disagree with me and anything I say today. Uh, you are powerful. So you, you get to decide. You make the decisions. Um, and you have potential for greatness. Uh, I believe that everyone has greatness within them. You have greatness within you. And because you are in control of your own destiny and you make the decisions and you are powerful, you can choose to be great. You can choose to step into greatness and, and you know, be anything that your, your, your heart desires. So those are the things you are. And that uh, aligning yourself uh, with that reality of who you are and what your identity is as an artist is going to keep you safe and, um, and not uh, vulnerable to people who prey on insecurities mm -hmm. uh, and ego. Yeah. And, and ego, people think, is, is being arrogant. Ego is actually um, birthed out of fear. You know, you're going to have a strong, giant ego if you have fear. So uh, fear and, and uh, insecurity and aligning yourself with that first list of what you're not um, is what would make you susceptible to, to scams. So um, this, I think, is probably the most important part of this is to, uh, to aim, right, because you're in control of your own destiny, to aim to align yourself with, with that identity that, that I just talked about. Is there anything you wanted to add to that or? I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it's like taking it off topic, but when you said it's not the dentists and lawyers and all these different careers that change the world, I think that's maybe right. But like if those people are artists while doing that, then I think they do have the power to change the world because yeah. it's like having that mentality of, um, like being an artist is like thinking outside the box, being your own, like being really creative. And I think there's, we want to see more of that in the world anyway, like mm -hmm. in building homes and all these different things. So that just, yeah. that one thing just stood out to me. And I know, I know that's kind of what you meant, but. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, um, it's just important to acknowledge and recognize as artists that traditionally, if you look at history and you look at, what is remembered? What is the legacy that's left yeah. behind in culture that drives another culture? It's the art. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's artists. Uh, and I, I don't just mean painters. I mean, all artists. Just uh, being creative. Yeah, yeah, it's the creatives of the world. Mm -hmm. And right now we live in a creator economy. Right yeah, now yeah. we live in a world that uh, the creators are, are the ones that are really controlling the world, that mm -hmm. are really um, positioned to, to, to move things in the direction that they need to go. So, um, uh, I think realizing that that's who you are and the work that you do and the importance and significance of what you've chosen to be a part of is, is really crucial. Yeah. So I didn't mean that if you yeah, are literally. a dentist yeah. that you don't have significance. I, I don't mean that at all. I just mean it's important to understand that history tells us that art changes the world. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's good that you bring all that up for sure. Just to go deeper, just because. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Do you want to talk about this? Um, how um, to get savvy? Sure. Um, so really, you can, you can, the good thing about like, you know, having all these online scams is, well, what I've noticed is there is a pattern with scammers. They really aren't getting that creative with um, their wording. They'll just copy and paste, send it to a ton of different people. Yeah. And so you can spot it. And so if something just kind of sounds weird to you, just Google it. Like you can copy and paste that, Google it and search, um, you know, see if that if there's a scam attached and there, there probably will be evidence with that for other people. So um, that's how you can really research and, you know, see if what you're getting is a scam. Um, so you can Google that. Um, really, like, if a company's reaching out to you, make sure you vet that company and, like, just go to their website, see 
where it's based in, um, maybe research reviews. Like you want to just get some background on that company. Don't just trust and take their word for it. And, um, you know, with the first opportunity, um, also talking to other artists. So all these different ways that we have listed are, I would just like write this down or screenshot it because this is really going to help you, um, sort through what's a scam, what's an opportunity later on. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And Reddit is a very good resource also. It's, uh, how would you describe Reddit, Jake? What you're, you're, you're on there quite a bit. It's sort of like a public bathroom wall or, (laughs) (laughs) Um, Reddit is where you go to hear people vent. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like always the, venting about scammers. The inside yeah. scoop about something. Yeah. And, and I would say for better or, and for worse as well. Like you can definitely get a lot of really good, um, insights on Reddit, but then you can get just garbage as well. Mm-hmm. It's the internet. <laughs> it's the internet. That's the thing you have to keep in mind is, uh, you know, you, it's, it's good. It causes us, uh, as, um, you know, citizens, consumers to really, really be discerning. Um, you know, back before, uh, government regulation, there was this saying that they had called buyer beware. Um, and you know, I don't know if you know this, but Coca-Cola used to actually put cocaine in Coca-Cola. And when, uh, the government sort of was like, Hey, what are you doing? You're putting this addictive substance uh, in, in, and they, they didn't have, uh, the laws that they could regulate so heavily, uh, Coca-Cola's entire, uh, defense was buyer beware. Um, it's not Coca-Cola's obligation to disclose what they do. Uh, it's, it's the buyer's obligation to be educated about what, what is inside of things. It was, and that was the mentality, um, you know, back at, at the, you know, a hundred years ago is it's buyer beware. The buyer, the consumer had the obligation to fully, uh, vet everything. Now we, we, you know, supposedly all the ingredients and what we eat and whatever is on the back of the box and it's all disclosed and you can read it and decide if you want to eat whatever's in there. Um, but back in the day, they, they didn't have to do that. And it, you had to, you know, take the food, test it out yourself and see what was in there. So um, I think that when it comes to online opportunities, companies, uh, any anything that you get, including what you read on Reddit, you have to have a discerning mind um, to be able to, to think um Critically. Critically, yeah. To think critically uh, and, and ask questions um, before you have a, a knee-jerk reaction and just arrive somewhere. Uh, but at the same time, don't just all of a sudden, you know, something sounds great, just run with it and assume it's true. So mm-hmm. um, it's kind of a good thing, I guess, that we live in this, this period where we, we really do have to take ownership of our decisions. Um, as far as, uh, you know, I have found that whenever I suspect anything to be a scam, I put whoever's name, the company's name, whatever it is I'm curious about and the word scam with it. And if it is in fact a scam, there will be tons of people talking about it. Not just one or two oddball things that you kind of find in the, the, the deep threads of, of Reddit, but it will be like front and center on the first page. Um, and you'll see a lot of it, a lot of people talking about it. Uh, and so it's, it's pretty easy to, to, um, to sort of, uh, you know, see what is, what is a scam. So, um, in fact, you can, you can put, uh, Milan art Institute into Google with the word scam behind it and, and see what you find. Um, I've done it and you know, it's, it's all good stuff. So, uh, you, it's, it's, it's always good. You can put Dimitra Milan scam, uh, and see if Dimitra has scammed anybody. Um, you can put Ellie Milan scam and see what comes up, you know? Um, so it's, it's great that all these things are really out in the open and you can understand, uh, you know, what, what's out there. Ah, what did I do? I just, I just pushed all the wrong buttons. Okay. Okay. Next one. Um, no, we're, we're still looking. So, and there's opportunities for art shows out there too. And sometimes those aren't scams, right? It's an art show and it's legit, but like a tent show, for example, 
Um, do you want to do this tent show? How many people come to the tent show? Uh, how, how long has this tent show been going on? Is it its first year? Uh, or is it, you know, been there for 10 years now? Um, there's a lot of things you can do to vet those opportunities and look at, uh, you know, you can you can find out who runs the show. What are the names of the people that run that show and run their name through Google and and see what the reviews are like? Who's talking about them and what are they saying? Um, so those those are all really good things to do to vet the companies, vet the opportunities, vet the shows. Um, you can look at business profiles. You can see exactly how much businesses make every year. Uh, you, if there's a gallery you're considering, you can do a business profile and research how many, how, how much business they do each year and decide, wow, this gallery only sells a hundred thousand dollars in, in art a year. How do they survive? I don't even think I want my art in there. Right. Uh, you, there's, there's a, there's a lot of ways that you can, you can check out companies, um, and how long they've been in business. You can look at their websites and you can always ask for references. Did you say LinkedIn or? Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a good. I mean, most business savvy people will be on LinkedIn. So um, if they're like really legit and are looking for connections, they'll have a LinkedIn profile and you can check them out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's get into the scams. My yeah. favorite. It's my wife's anniversary. So <laughs> who, who's gotten this email? Oh, I uh, have <laughs> so many times. Yeah. I mean, this, this can happen monthly, honestly. So this one is tricky because... I've had like actual real customers buy a painting for their, for their anniversary. But when it's worded a certain way, you just kind of pick up, like if you have any red flags, just stay on the safe side. Like try to just, I mean, you can always walk it out through email. It's not really going to do any harm. But once you get to um, like them trying to buy it or get you to click a link or something, then you kind of know, okay, that's then you'll know if it's a scam. But when I first got this email, I think it was like, I don't know, five, six years ago, I started getting emails like this. And um, the first one I took serious, I thought like, oh, wow, it's their anniversary. And there's like this whole, usually the guy's name was John. I had like three emails. Hi, my <laughs> name's John. And it's my wife's anniversary. A lot of times <laughs> they have two first names. So it'll be um, like John Roger. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. his first name's John, his last name's Roger. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So there's just like a pattern that you can see. But the first one I got, I, I walked it out because I thought this was real. And um, anyway, they didn't have very good English. And then towards like somewhere in the middle when we were getting to the payment part, well, they would just say, I just, I have this budget and I want, you know, anything under this budget and just tell me what you have and I'll buy it, something like that. And that just sounded kind of weird to me. Like they didn't find a specific painting. Why would they just give me a budget? Like I want to spend $5,000, tell me what I can buy. That's kind of weird. So people don't do that usually. Um, so those are some things to look out for. And that's like a very common email that you'll get. Mm -hmm. And what are they after? They're basically after, uh, they, they want to get to the point of the transaction um, and there it's one of two scams, either an overpayment. Uh, so this is, this is very common, not just with art, but, um, this has been around for a long time. So they over, they, it looks like they overpaid you and the money will look like it actually hit your account. Um, and you, or, or you'll see, uh, the, they'll send you, you know, like a fake, um, Hey, the money has been wired. It's been sent. Um, and it, but I accidentally paid too much. So can you return X amount? Um, and so they're, they're waiting for you now to send them, you know, the extra $800 or, or whatever. Um, and so that's one way. The other way is they, uh, are going to send you a link so that you can pay through this link and that link will basically zap your account mm -hmm. and, and get the information um, out of your account when you click on that link. So, uh, or they'll want to send a check and that's like, I think that was like actually the first email I got, they were saying they want to send a check. And I thought, Oh, that's kind of weird for someone to do that. They could just go to my website, buy the painting. If they really want it. So then when I kept pressuring them, then they were like, well, 
I also want to send my courier, my own courier, to pick up the artwork, which that's super strange. No one does that. So yeah. those are some things to look out for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this one, uh, impersonating a gallery. This happened to me actually very recently. Um, and usually um, they're trying to collect some kind of bogus fee uh, for something. So this was somebody on Instagram that was pretending to be a curator of a very, very well-known gallery in, in uh, New York. And they're usually some kind of famous gallery in New York or Paris or something like that. And... Um, and so, you know, I went to her profile on, on Instagram and, you know, looked and, and it says curator, you know, on there. And she, she had these, probably not even her, it's probably like, I don't some know, some random person, some random person, but, uh, ha, you know, it, it looked like what would be an art curator and her, her, uh, profile said that she worked for that gallery. And so it just seemed weird to me. So I, um, I plugged in her name to Google uh, nothing showed up. So then I went to the gallery's website. Um, cause I just couldn't believe it. Like this famous gallery is not, you know, soliciting, uh, artists, you know, that, that a gallery at that level is not going to like contact an, an, an no. artist, you know? No. Uh, so anyway, uh, and I, I looked that that person did not work for that gallery. There was no, no evidence. And their that that email person... was kind of made up, right? Yeah, their the email, email was weird. It, yeah. The email was missing like one letter. So it said at such and such gallery.com. Um, but at the gallery was misspelled. I didn't notice it at first. Um, and I thought, Oh, they have the, they have an email from this gallery. Um, but it, but it wasn't, it was it, one, one letter was off. So um, anyway, it was basically, it's a scam and I've had, uh, students contact me and other, I've heard other artists, uh, talk about it, that, uh, gallery impersonation is one way and they're looking for, um, you know, they'll even send you a contract, like a phony contract. Um, you know, you're getting ready to send your artwork, everything, but they have a hanging fee or they have a curation fee or they have a initiation fee of some sort. They'll even say, we'll take this off of your first sale. We'll pay it back after your first sale. Um, all, but they're basically after a quick $500, uh, or $300. Usually the fees are small enough that enough artists, you know, uh, will do it, you know, thinking they're getting really into this sad. gallery. It's really sad. Um, so let's go to the next one. Okay. The NFT scam. Yeah, probably a lot of you watching have probably gotten the scam, but... Um, and there's two kinds of NFT scams that I know of. Do there you want to be do more. You just go first? Okay, so, um, so the first NFT scam is basically just like the last one. They're trying to collect fees. So these are people that are not involved in the NFT world. There's nothing, you know, they, they have this racket going where um, they uh, they um, they even have uh, phony uh, phony sites that that are you know for minting the the NFTs and you you know they want you to mint on this one site you can't mint it anywhere else it's got to be on this one site and it's basically a phony site and it's just there to collect to collect fees um, and they're out for you know three to five hundred dollars for for minting or gas fees and so um, for those of you that don't know what an NFT is I'll just very very briefly actually Jake do you want to briefly cover no okay so uh, what an NFT is it's a uh, non-fungible token right mm -hmm. and so what that it all works around blockchain. So blockchain is a technology. Blockchain is an is legit. Um, blockchain is just a technology, and uh, an NFT um, exists on this blockchain, which is like a a smart contract. It's this. Con you should watch like a TED talk about it if you really want to understand blockchain. Fascinating. It's very cool. Um, I think it's going to be a big part of our future. And so NFTs work in that. They also run um, utilizing different cryptocurrencies. So uh, you don't buy an NFT with like American cash, right? You, you buy it with uh, cryptocurrencies. And so, um, so several years ago, NFTs were being sold right and left. Um, and they were basically um, something collectible 
um, that was recorded on this on this blockchain, and uh, and you could you could trade it, um, sort of like Pokemon cards, uh, uh, you know, back in the day. And um, people were you know buying at this rate and then selling at this rate. So art, they started to actually sell art. Um, and you know, if you've seen those those apes and those those monkeys, you know, those were like really well known NFTs. And there is kind of a world around that. Maybe even still, um, there's there's people who are still pretty involved in that. But what they don't do is contact artists on Instagram and solicit artwork as if artwork is very difficult to find. Yeah, and they just you know, and and NFTs don't work based on the quality of the artwork. They're like these pixelated digital cartoons, right? Uh, uh, and, and, and that's the artwork NFT. They're not oil paintings that you've done in your studio that you take a picture of. Yeah, usually and now digital that's artists collectible. will do NFTs. Yeah. And um, I mean, we know some artists who have even gone through our program and they make a lot of money selling their art as NFTs, but they'll make specific um, online renderings of their paintings. So there's like a whole process to it. And you can, as the artist, go on these platforms, create your portfolio, do all that work. You don't need someone who's trying to curate it and, no. and do this for you. So Absolutely. And the other thing is you probably only want to get into the NFT uh, art thing if you know buyers in there. If you already know the buyers, just putting it up on, you know, some platform that sells NFTs and waiting for somebody to come along and buy your art, it's just going to sit there. Uh, the people who do this and make money at it actually know the buyers. They're involved in that uh, community. There's basically a community around it, and you kind of have to have an in in that community. And there are not people that are trying to get people into that community um, from the, you know, from Instagram, let's say. So anytime anybody approaches you on Instagram or any social media or email claiming NFT and you're going to make a bunch of money, it's always a scam. Yeah. It's just a scam no matter what. Um, so, uh, in this case, scam number one, they're trying to get a fee out of you. Um, they're basically scamming you for three to $500. Um, and in, in a very loose sense, your, your, uh, your artwork did get minted and gassed and whatever, but it's on this phony site that nothing's going to ever happen. And if you want to mint an NFT, it would be like 30 bucks. Uh, if you wanted to do that on OpenSea or something like that. So, Anyway, it's, it's a scam. Um, okay. Scam number two is. Oh, with the NFTs. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they, well, yeah, they can say that it's for their wife's anniversary again. No, no, no. What this is, is okay. So NFT scam number two is like a spinoff of the classic. Uh, this is for my wife's anniversary because the scam runs the same. They're looking for a link to zap your account they're going to send you a link or an overpayment, or instead of the courier service, it's the gas fee. So it's just a spin off of that, um, that, you know, typical, uh, scam. It's just that they, and so this is when you'll see them, uh, claiming that they're going to buy, um, multiple paintings, multiple paintings yeah. from you. And they, they're, they're throwing numbers of like, usually I'm seeing them around nine or 10,000, nine to 12,000, um, is around the price range. And so then, you know, they're going to buy your artwork. The scam is they're going to buy your artwork, your originals from you, your actual artwork. They own them and the permission. The, this is all a scam, though. It's not real. The permission to turn them into an NFT, and then they're going to sell the NFTs for whatever they want. And so they're, they'll even pretend to send you a contract for it, all kinds of things. And the whole elaborate um, uh, game is to basically... Uh, in that exchange where you're going to accept the money from them, that's when the scam takes place. So there is no NFT. There is no, they don't know people. They don't have buyers. All those things they're talking about, it's not real. So, I mean, so far to this day, haven't really had any, any legit NFT like opportunity come my way. Like it's all been a scam. Anytime the word NFT is involved, that's just my opinion. When it, that comes into like my inbox, I'm just like ignoring it because it's, it's always a scam. And like you said, if you really want to go into that world, sell your art as an, as an NFT, you can go do that on your own and get into that community. But um, all these people claiming to like 
like I get so many messages and it's just, it's just, yeah, sad. And so I just block those people or ignore it. And that's mostly in social media, like Instagram. Okay. You want to talk about this one? So, um, <clears throat> recently there's been a lot of social media scams and, um, I've seen this happen to a lot of our students and this has happened to me so many times where people will impersonate, they'll take, so someone will basically make a fake account of mine. They'll take my pictures, they'll pretend to be me, and then they'll go and contact my followers, try to get, somehow they do get followers, they get people somehow believing that it's me or it's like my they'll second content, account. They'll even um, copy your content. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, copy my captions, everything, and they'll say like, like this is my personal account or whatever. They'll just make a, a fake account. And so they'll contact my followers and um, say that I want to use them as a model and they're going to pay them for it. So they're offering to pay these, these people like money to be their model to paint anyway, or they'll do a commission or something and want to pay the, to be their muse. Be the, yeah. Something like that. And I, I've seen the wording the same every time. And this hasn't just happened to me. This has happened to other um, people in our community, other artists out there where they are being impersonated and their things stolen. So um, luckily people, I mean, it's not a very smart scam because people can see like, that's not really my account. There's not very many followers. There's just, there's not even likes on the photos. You just got to like be wary of that. And um, what the scam is, is probably what you said, like doing the overpayment, like they're going to somehow send you money and then want you to like click this link. I have, I haven't gone through the process of it, but I've had people like send me screenshots of these, um, these conversations they're having. So, um, that's something that's happening a lot. And so just be wary of that. They and also, just so you know, they can set up phony PayPal and Zelle. It, it looks yeah. real. They, they mm -hmm. make the font the same. They have the colors the same. They basically make a phony landing page of, of, you know, uh, impersonating PayPal or Zelle. Mm -hmm. So you think you're actually, you know, getting paid from PayPal and it's, it's a phishing to mechanism capture, to capture yeah. your information. So that's the main worry. That's the main thing that you'll get scammed on. Um, so yeah, that's that one. So and a way to avoid it. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, you, okay. So a way to avoid it is, um, getting a check mark. So if you're in a position where people are impersonating your social media, you don't have to have a ton of followers, but, um, if, if, if you, that what, what they're doing is they're recognizing that you do have followers, you do have, you know, fans and people that they can contact. So if you're in that position where you have enough followers and enough fans that admire your work and follow you, then you, uh, could be, um, you know, uh, one of the people that gets, uh, you know, an, an impersonating account. So if you get the check mark, um, you know, it costs, I don't remember what it costs, but it costs a little bit each month on Instagram to have it. It's like $15 a month, I think. $15 a month. But I think it's really well worth it. $15 is not that much. And you'll probably get a lot more followers from it. And um, you won't uh, be as easily impersonated. Um, you can expose the imposters. So mm -hmm. as soon as you, you are aware, expose them, um, and report the account and you can get your followers to also report it. Yeah, totally. And that usually takes care of it, but it's really sad and it is heartbreaking because they're basically making you look bad to your followers, you know, and, and scamming your followers. You're not getting scammed. Your followers are getting scammed and, um, and I, I, I know, um, one of, one of our students, it happened mm. to her Oh man! and, um, and she had a few people contact her like super mad, um, and like mad wow. at, yeah. And so it's really, it's really a bummer. Um, okay. So email scams, we touched on this a little bit, like with the anniversary ones. I mean, there's tons of email scams, um, and so I'm going to share a story about how I got majorly scammed. And um, basically what happened was I got this email um, a few years ago, and um, this was in 2018. I got this email, and it was like this fashion like boutique company. 
and the email looked like there wasn't any grammar mistakes. I mean, it looked like a normal email reaching out for a collaboration. And they were saying, I'll send you some uh, pieces of clothing and you can just model it in your photos and we'd be happy to pay you or whatever. I don't, I don't remember the details, but what they did is they sent me a link in that email for me to go check out their page on Instagram to see like their brand. And so that seemed all like fine. So I clicked the link and it took me to a page that looked just like Instagram, but it wanted me to log in because I thought maybe this is like, it was like on a different browser, like Safari or something. So I had to like log into Instagram. And so that, you know, I was kind of like, mm, maybe this isn't smart to do, but I don't really know this. This looks just like, Inst like I didn't really have a red flag at that point. So I um, logged in, you know, put my username, put my password, and then it took me right to Instagram. And I was looking at their page and decided, you know, it wasn't a good fit, it wasn't good. And so I was going to like go email them back and tell them, um, no thanks. Um, and then, okay, it's so like five to 10 minutes shortly after that, I started getting these other emails from like just someone completely random, just another different email. And they were really threatening me and like being super pushy and wanting a response from me. And they were saying things like, if you don't respond to this email and pay this fee, we're going to um, we're going to delete your Instagram account. And I just thought I didn't even connect the two because it just happened around the same time, but it, it was like different emails. So I didn't even connect it. Anyway, uh, someone got into my account with that, that link that I clicked, took my Instagram login, hacked my account and basically, you know, took control over it, locked me out. And so I couldn't get back in and I was ignoring those emails. I was not, I thought there's no way these people can just delete my account like that. They don't have that kind of power. I'll just ignore it, see what happens. They kept pressuring me like, you have one hour to respond before we delete your account. You have 20 minutes. And I just kept ignoring these emails. And then my account was like totally gone. It was just absolutely like just nowhere, it, it, no one could find it. And so they actually deleted it. And I was so shocked and horrified. And like, that was a big source of my business. Like I was selling prints there. I was just, you know, that was my, I had like a lot of followers on Instagram. So it was devastating. And um, anyway, a couple of days went by. I was just kind of thinking I had to start over. And um, my friend knew someone in uh, another country that, could hack into people's accounts and, and help them get their accounts back. And so I messaged him and he said he could do it. He said that they actually did delete it. Like he did some like, I don't know how they, how they hack the system and hack back your account, but somehow he like said it could be done, but it was like gonna be really hard and it took 10 days to do it. And I had to like send these codes in and take a picture with my face. And anyway, I got it back after 10 days and it was and just it like a miracle. You, it cost you. It cost me like $600 to do that. But it was, I mean, so worth it because that was like my business. So, or a really good portion of it. Um, so all that to say, just, I mean, what I learned was like, don't just log in on any website or click any links. And I haven't gotten any kind of email since then like that. I feel like that was just a really, really sneaky scam. Um, but and it came to you right at the moment where you were just leaving the publisher and going out yes. on your own. Yeah. And she had made this decision at like age 17 that she wanted to self-represent. She wanted to, you know, uh, it was a vulnerable time. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, and, you know, I'm sure you were going through some self doubts about, you know, can I even handle this? Maybe I do need a publisher, you know, and, um, because it goes back to the identity of an artist, right? Where you, you are more vulnerable to control or being scammed or taken advantage of if you have this mentality of, I just want to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. I just want to paint in my studio and have somebody else handle the business aspect. I don't want to do marketing. I don't want to have to do social media. I don't want to do all that. I just want to be taken care of. I just want to paint. Um, and you know, I, I have spent at least half of my career, maybe more than half of my career in that being taken care of zone. 
and I had dealers, I had, um, you know, publishers, different, different, um, agents, reps that, that would handle my business side and I would just paint. But, you know, I, when I worked with the dealer, I only made 15% of the painting. Can you imagine that? So if the painting sold for, um, a thousand dollars, let's say I only made $150 of that 1000 and, uh, you know, they end up in control. Whoever's making the most money off of your art gets to make all the decisions. So you want those decisions to, to really be made by you. And you're not going to be susceptible of being taken advantage of or uh, tricked or controlled if you run your own business as a business owner. So it was right when you had made that decision. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, unfortunately it happened. And, yeah. but in the end it all worked out and yeah. it was a valuable. And I will say, I still have his information and I've, I've given it to other people who've had their um, accounts hacked and it, they, he's helped them get them back. So if that ever happens to you, um, I can give you his information. So hopefully that never happens, but. And you're not getting a cut, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. So basically what they're after is your password. Uh, information. They want to hack you and extort you. Yeah, that's what it was. It, it was, was like an extortion. Yeah. yeah, it was such a twisted, roundabout way to do that. Yeah. But. Um. Okay. Well, and I just wanted to add to um to like whenever to combat that if you just check the links in the URL. Like if you just look at the URL, mm -hmm. then you can't be scammed if it's on actual Instagram dot com because. Yeah. No one else has access to Instagram's domain other than Instagram. So if you were logging in and you checked the URL and you saw that it was, you know, insta.gram.me or whatever, and it wasn't mm -hmm. actually Instagram.com, then you would know that's not, that was that's my mistake. not Instagram. And yep. that is where they're scamming you because they buy URLs that look like these platforms like PayPal, Instagram, Venmo, you know, all these other platforms, whatever, whatever they're trying to scam you on insta ma'am yeah <laughs> yeah they they well they try to find whatever looks as close as possible and then they slap the logo on there so it feels like it's instagram yeah. and then you know in the hurry and hustle and bustle you just don't think to look at the url yeah. but mm -hmm. if you click on any links in any emails really it's super important to look at the urls especially oh. if you're going to enter your information also just remembered the reason I got scammed too is because I didn't have two factor authentication on. Mm. So after that point, I learned I had to have that on. So you guys make sure that you have that oh, for that Instagram. A, that's a good point. So then you, two -factor. you can't really, it'd be much harder to get hacked into your account. So mm -hmm. at that time, I just had my password and that was it. Yeah. Okay. So this next one, um, this is something that. If, if this is just an interesting exercise for you, um, just to kind of reiterate the get savvy part, if you, if you Google, um, PR company, mogul press, you just Google that you're going to see all these fantastic articles about how wonderful they are. They're revolutionizing the, the PR landscape. Uh, they, they are the heroes of PR. They've, they, there's testimonial after testimonial of this person and that person that has been, um, you know, uh, um, their life has changed because of this company and, and all the exposure they got them. Uh, you'll, you'll see tons of articles written by sort of obscure, you'll never have heard of them, uh, companies. Uh, and basically they did that. So all the testimonials are fake. Everything's fake. All the articles are fake. Um, they're on, you know, their own domains or, you know, various domains that they they've created so that when you Google them, you'll see, Oh wow, this is, this is something real. Um, and, uh, if you were to Google PR company, mogul press scam, you're going to see an entirely different information. You will see tons of people, uh, posting back and forth messages, uh, all the ways that they have scanned them and stolen their money. Uh, you will see a very, very different report. So um, I, this company has contacted me numerous times. I even write back to them. They probably contact me like three, four times a month. 
And it's wow. always a different person that works at this, works at this company. And, um, and I'll write back and say, you're a scam, you know, you're, uh, you're fake, you're phony. And I, I, I send it and then I block. So I don't know. I don't know how they're still, they're still functioning, but basically it, they pretend to be a PR company. They contact you. Uh, it's, it's sort of a pay to play kind of thing. You pay $500, uh, for them to write an article about you, um, in they'll name a, a variety of famous magazines. Ellie weekly is one of them. Um, and then it, the, the contract, they send you a contract, they send you an interview. They say, we're going to send you an interview, fill out the questions, um, send us pictures. Uh, and they, they make it look like they're going to post this, uh, this article about you for $500. And you're thinking, wow, only $500. And it's not an ad. It's an actual article about me in this famous magazine. I mean, that's a good deal, right? Because if you were to buy an ad, it would be, you know, $4,000. So, um, so a lot of people fall for it. And basically in the fine print of their contract, they say that they may or may not print it. Actually, uh, it may or may not go to print. And basically nothing ever happens. They got $500 from you and your, your article never went to print. So it's a, it's, it's just a way to get 500 bucks from artists. And it's not just artists. They contact anybody who wants exposure um, and it's just a way to get $500 and you can read all about it. It's all over the internet. Um, it's, but you have to put the word scam. They've flooded because of all the scam complaints. They've flooded, um, you know, the first pages of Google, uh, with these phony articles about how they're this amazing PR company. So that when you just simply Google their name, um, that's all you see. And you're like, oh, wow, this is legit. I'm going to pay the $500. So, <clears throat> Uh, anyway, pretty elaborate, but here's another one that I would say, have they ever contacted you? I think they did. It looks familiar. Maybe. There's several companies. This is just an example. Um, and this isn't necessarily a scam. Uh, so now we're kind of entering into territory where opinions, it, it, well, <laughs> yeah, opinions, but it's, it's not a scam, meaning they're not doing anything illegal. Um, they might be aggressive or but it's just, it's just not a good idea for artists. So, um, not a good opportunity. What no. do you think? So this, this company is called Agora Gallery in Chelsea, New York, and they, uh, contact artists constantly. Uh, so if you've been contacted by them, don't be flattered necessarily because they've contacted most of our students. Um, they, they, they contact people constantly, artists constantly. And what they want is, uh, they have these shows, so they have a space in New York and they, they just have shows like every three days. So they're just constantly having shows. Um, and you pay, uh, upfront 3,500 to 17,000, depending on the show, you really do get a show. You send your artwork there. Your artwork is up, but it's not going to sell. They make all their money off of artists. It's a vanity gallery. So that's basically, um, what a vanity gallery is. There are some vanity galleries, um, that actually do sell artwork. Uh, but most of them make money off of you paying them for these shows mm -hmm. and they're not under pressure at all whatsoever to actually sell artwork. They probably don't even take a commission or, well, they take a low commission. They, mm -hmm. most of them take 30% or 25%. Mm -hmm. Um, but it doesn't matter because they're not selling artwork. Uh, they make no effort to bring buyers in. Uh, they, um, you know, have some warm bodies that show up every once in a while, but it's just, it's not, it's not a real a uh, retail gallery that makes their money off of selling art. They make their money off of selling space to artists. Um, and if you look at the artwork that is on their websites and in their shows, you can tell right away it's not, it's not great artwork. So, um, that, so vanity galleries are, I think, mis misrepresentative because they come across as some opportunity where you can really, you know, get exposure and, and, you know, sell your art and you're in a gallery and you have gallery representation, but all you're doing is paying a very high fee to put your art on a wall somewhere. Um, and it's, it's not how, m m uh, galleries are really run. Um, okay. So opportunities for art fairs and art shows. So this again is not a scam. Uh, it's, it's not illegal. It's not, um, you know, but it's just something to really watch out for. So there are, um, companies that will contact you, 
uh, and solicit artists and offer space and, and exposure. Representation is how they put it. They're, they're going to offer you representation at one of these big art shows. Um, and so that could be, you know, um, you know, art fairs in, uh, uh, what is, you know, art basil, red dot, one of those. Um, and they charge or New York art expo. There's a lot of people that do it for that. And mm -hmm. they have big upfront fees. Um, so let's say a space at New York art expo costs, um, $9,000 for the space. Uh, they'll get, you know, five artists and charge them $6,000 each. Uh, so they rented a space for 9,000 and they made 30,000, uh, to put the artwork up, something like that. Um, and so you'll get like three paintings allowed to put maybe three paintings in this space. And if you put, uh, you know, 15 paintings in this space, you could pay just a few thousand more and have the whole space to yourself and have complete control of it. So it's just, it's not very good for artists because they are making money off of you mm -hmm. by subletting the spaces in these big art fairs. Yeah. Um, so probably to like vet them out, you can contact the artists that maybe they've worked with. You can yeah. ask them, what other artists have you worked with? I want to see like, you know, so you can go talk to them and see if they have made sales or, um, you know, if they like the experience or not. So that's a good way to like vet it. Occasionally there will be um, uh, companies that, that are, you know, legit and offer something fair. So you just have to check it out. Um, there could be a company that, rents that, that space in, in New York, um, for, for 9,000 and they put, um, you know, uh, three artists in there and you're charged, you know, 3,500 each. And so it's like, well, I could just pay 3,500. I get to participate in the show. Um, and, and it's fair, right? They're not making money off of you. And then maybe they make, um, a percentage, you know, a small percentage uh, of sales, but what are they offering? Are they offering to sell it for you? Are they off? Are they bringing in clients to the show? So they they have there has to be an exchange for that money, um, and not just um, okay. I'm going to give you you know all this money, get nothing for it, and I could do better without you. So you want to really check all that out, um, weigh out the percentages, the fees. What are they actually offering? I think it's a red flag if they don't want you to come. Mm. that's a real red flag. If they're like, no, 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 we, we, we got it handled. You don't need to come. Um, that's a real red flag. Are they even putting your artwork up? Maybe they put it up, took a picture, sent it to you, but you know, it really didn't go up. So, um, you know, you, you, if, if you can go to this show and you can be present and you, you can participate, um, and the fees and the percentages all add up, uh, you know, it might not be a bad idea. So these aren't all necessarily scams. You just have to check it out. But oftentimes um, they are making money off of artists mm -hmm. and not actually providing a service. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different artist platforms out there. And um, so this is like, like, like maybe art, Saatchi. Art, art storefronts. Yeah. Well, Art okay. storefronts is like a main, a main one that's out there. Yeah. And we've had, we've, you know, looked into that and it sounds like a great opportunity for an artist, but it really, they're just, they are making most of their money by charging you for their marketing classes and just, um, they're not really like actually creating a good platform for you to sell your work on. So they're, they're basically, if you just kind of stay away from it's like this this pattern of they're making all their money up front from fees, charging you as the artist, then they're not really, it's not really going to be the best opportunity for you. Yeah. Um, and but, <clears throat> but other platforms like, you know, Saatchi or um, there's so many, like um, what's the one I'm thinking of that? Fine Art America. Oh. Singular Art. Yeah. No, yeah. But these are like online galleries and I feel like those could be, these all could be, Good opportunities. Yeah, if those you, are legit. Yeah, yeah, those are legit. But what's the other one? It starts with an S. It's like it's a bunch of um, products. Oh, society of seven. society society, of society six. is six. Yeah, so that is kind of. I mean, it's an okay opportunity, but anyway, if you have more thoughts to yeah, well, different the, platforms to talk about the issues to look for in uh, being a part of artist platforms. Um, society of six is a good example. Is 
you don't own or fine art america is another one um you don't own uh your your client base they do so mm -hmm. for example if somebody buys your artwork on there you're not going to ever know who they are you're not going to have their address their email their phone number uh Fine Art America knows it, Society of Six knows it, and they get the client. Mm -hmm. So you're the bait and they get the client. So um, you never know who your buyers are. So you can't retarget them. You can't add them to your email list. You can't um, you know, sell them an original later after they bought a print. Uh, so that is the main problem. It's just basically you have to be okay with making a little small portion of the profit. Uh, they get most of it and they get the client. You don't even get to know who it is. Uh, so I don't think it's good for artists. I don't think it's even a good launch. There's, there's other ways, um, that there's other, um, methods that, that I think are better. Um, artist storefronts is another, another one. Mm -hmm. Um, it's they, like a website building platform for artists where they really say that they're going to like market you and like help you with all the marketing part of it. And, and yeah, all they're doing is making a subpar website for you. That's not as good as one that you could make yourself on Shopify. Mm -hmm. Um, you don't get to control it. Uh, you don't get to really, uh, you know, change it up or, 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 you know, control the back end of it. Uh, you don't really it's not user friendly. It's yeah, yeah, it's not user friendly. It's pretty old fashioned. And then you have, you can't sell other prints on it or other products. You can only sell their products and their prints. And again, they, you either, uh, uh, they, they get the client. And so, um, it's, it's not a good situation. Anytime you're really abdicating your control so that somebody sort of takes care of you for you, you're, you're, it's, it's rarely, if ever a good situation. So, uh, a lot of these artist platforms, you just have to kind of watch your heart. Like what, what are you really after? Are you looking to be taken care of? Are you looking to just, I don't want to deal with it. Then there's a price to pay for that. Yeah. And that is going to be that you're not going to be able to, you know, uh, build a relationship with your clientele. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're just basically going to earn the little bit of money you get from, from those interactions. Whereas Etsy, on the other hand, that is a little bit different. You do know who's buying mm -hmm. your product. Um, you do get to see, um, okay, this person with this address and you're shipping it, you're in control of the product and you know exactly who the artwork goes to. And, um, you just pay a tiny percentage for, um, I think it's is it every transaction yeah it's every, per transaction i think it's like yeah. five to six percent something like that so in the end you i mean so many people etsy i think is a good platform if you're starting out and you don't have a website yet that is a good place because there's so many people who go on there who look for handmade things who find artists and so yeah um okay so now i think this is the last um category that we wanted to cover um, art education. So, um, with art education and we're in the art education field. So we, we know, we know this, this realm pretty well. Um, there's, there's always these, uh, you know, my mom calls them Johnny come lately's, you know, I don't know, whatever a Johnny come lately is, but there's these people that haven't had a very long career. You can find out very little about them. Uh, they don't have an artist website. I'm thinking of, of one person in particular. Um, he doesn't have an artist website. You can't find out what his art looks like. Yet he claims that he can teach you how to sell your artwork without a website, without social media. And it's like, how? Like, what are you talking about? So this formula of I have X desire without X pain with this secret method. So that sort of formula is is very, um, you know, a, a, a token set up for some sort of, um, I wouldn't call it a scam, but you're not going to get what you're paying for. Um, and, and it's usually, um, scam -y, a fast scam track. If it feels like it's a s silver bullet, like, yeah, just do this one thing. And yeah. Yeah. So the whole idea of, you know, this one silver bullet, if you just do this one thing, then you'll be able to, to have this. Um, and, uh, you know, what you, what is really true, what, what you want to look for in terms of art education, whether that's education about marketing, education about how to sell your artwork, uh, education on how to get the skills, whatever, whatever it is you want to get education on, you, you really want to look at the teachers who owns this business, who is the spokesperson, the owner, uh, the brand face, what do they represent? What is their fruit? How long have they in been in business? 
artwork will speak for itself. You want to really, really look at the artwork. Um, do they have the skills and is, is their artwork really any good? Can you, I mean, I see this one guy that's um, marketing, teaching, teaching artists how to sell art. And he's always saying, I just sold this for $10,000. I just sold this for $20,000. Like every day I see a new ad where he sold this, that. And I'm looking at the artwork and I'm like, how? How does he sell that artwork for $20,000? I don't, I don't understand. So the artwork really will speak for itself. If there's something inside of you that's going, how? Oh, how does this person do that? You know, they, they probably aren't. So um, you can vet and really look at and research um, the, the teachers and the people, how long have they been in business? Uh, do they have a career behind them where they really did do these things? And th those are things that are easy to, to um, check out. Are their students easily accessible? Can you actually find real students that you can talk with? Um, if they have a big following and a lot of students, surely those students are very easy to contact and find, and you can get real testimonials by just simply contacting their students. Um, a lot of times, good schools, good, good opportunities are going to public forums where you can get on a public forum and just have conversations with people that are involved in that community. Um, reviews, looking at all the different kinds of reviews, not the phony reviews, but actual real reviews, um, like, you know, a Google review or something like that. Um, what else? Um, oh, is the cost shown in writing and upfront? Or do you have to like dig for weeks and weeks and it's never really or, written out? Or you have to do a call first yeah, and yeah. see if you'll be accepted. That's yeah. something also. And then they're like, here's all the fees and you have to pay all this stuff in a phone call. So Yeah. And any kind of hard sell where, where you know, act now or you'll lose it. Or for this time only, you'll get blah, blah, blah. Um, is, is typically uh, a red flag. Um, so just so you know, uh, true success in art, I'm just going to tell you straightforward as somebody who's done it, uh, Dimitra who's done it, true success in art will only happen through hard work, commitment, dedication, devotion, passion, picking up the skills, learning the skills. Uh, that is how true success in art will happen. You have to persevere. You have to stick with it. You have to be committed. There is no silver bullet mm -hmm. and there is no one coming to, to, you know, uh, rescue you and, and make it all happen for you. Yeah. Um, and there is no sil silver bullet. Um, there, there are faster ways and smarter ways to, to get things. I mean, I went to art school for four years, five years, actually, I went to art school for five years and if I had stuck with Savannah College of Art and Design for all five years, I would have, my parents would have paid a ton of money. Um, I transferred to University of Georgia, where it was a little bit cheaper. And today, if I went to Savannah College of Art and Design for five years, it would be uh, $300,000, right? Because it's $60,000 a year. So uh, you don't have to do that. That's not what we're talking about, hard work, um, dedication, and, and $300,000. Absolutely not. Talk about a scam. I'm sorry, but that is a scam. Like, sorry, Tanner, I know you went there too, but um, <laughs> Savannah College of Art and Design for $300,000. Opinions. Yeah, it's my saying. opinion. It is my opinion. But I mean, yeah, that that's like, I well, don't know. Well, they're not teaching you to actually like find your own voice, know how to like put yourself out there. They didn't give you the skills of like like painting 40 plus hours a week so that you could even be fast enough to produce enough work and to sell it. Yeah. Right. The whole mentality wasn't about that. Right. So, um, so anyway, you, you, there, there are, um, smart ways to do it. I believe that, that for any artist, this is, this is just what I believe from experience, any artist, no matter where you're at, even if you're a brand new beginner, if you work really, really hard and really consistently at least 20 hours a week, if not more, and you work really, really hard, um, you can uh, become a successful artist in about a year. Are you going to sell millions of dollars and be in every gallery under the sun? Probably not. You'll start out uh, a little bit you know, uh, slower selling your artwork for could be, you know, $800, $500 in that range. 
Um, and then as you progress and as you know, you turn into the, the second year and the third year and the fourth year, your prices will increase. Your ability to reach more people will increase. Your social media will increase. You'll get better at what you're doing. Um, but I think any artist can get on the board and start selling their artwork to the point where they can make at least uh, two to four thousand dollars a month consistently. I believe anybody can do that with enough hard work and dedication mm -hmm. and passion um, in about a year, and that's not bad. It's not instant success. It's not a silver bullet. It does require a, a tremendous amount of hard work and commitment, but it is possible. So I'm not. I'm not one of those. I'm not in the elitist camp that, you know, only the special few. Uh, you know, if you go to this like Ivy League, you know, art school, um, are you going to make it? Absolutely not. Uh, I think anybody can make it. Mm -hmm. um, and and I've seen that. I've seen that with our students. So yeah. And they've come in at any level. So even if like you're totally a beginner, you don't even know how to draw or paint. Um, we've had those students take this program and um, do extremely well. Yeah. And um, uh, let's look at the different pros and cons of art education. So there's different ways that you can learn um, art. You can learn in traditional art schools. Um, we, you can learn uh, in in-person workshops and classes. And there's online courses and YouTube. Um, so for traditional art school, I mean, we already talked about Savannah College of Art and Design, and there's other schools like that um, that... Uh, in, in fact, like just recently, I was I was looking up, you know, just various various schools and, and art schools and different things. And I saw a lot of students that were going to um, art, blah, 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 art institute. So Miami Art Institute, uh, Philadelphia Art Institute, whatever art institute, it's like a, a company. And many of those schools have gone out of business. And so those students are left, you know, in their second, third years and the school went out of business and they have no way, you know, to get their four year degree. So a lot of traditional art schools are actually going out of business because they're charging way too much and not there's not enough students that are able to go. Um, so the price of them are extremely high and um, it does take four years. You have to go physically. Um, you have to live in that area and you basically have to be a full time student. You can't also have a full-time job and go to this art school. So there's a lot of a lot of drawbacks. I think the pros of, of a traditional art school is you get to be around a lot of other artists um, and meet a lot of people and sort of be a part of a community. And I think that I think that's good. Um, you get face-to-face -face feedback. Mm -hmm. um, if if your professor is is the ki kind that gives feedback. <laughs> um, okay, so you can learn locally. You can go to um, you know, community colleges or, or local art schools. Um, there's local artists that offer classes. So those are all really good opportunities. Um, the, the downside to that is rarely do they have actual programs like an art school where you can, you know, start here, finish here, and have this objective. Um, a lot of times uh, they, they don't teach you how to have a career where you can actually sell your art and know how to build a business um, or how to find your voice. I think that's really key. Um, you know, they're more like, oh, figure drawing, you know, and so the good part is you have opportunities to, to do, uh, to have like a figure model that you can, that you can go and, and you can draw. And I think that that's fantastic. Um, you can be a part of a community and meet other local artists. You can, you know, um, build, uh, relationships with the teachers. So I think, I think that, that learning locally at a local art school, um, you know, definitely has some benefits. Um, the hard part is, you know, it's, it's going to take a lot longer to get to where you want to go because there's very few people that have that, that program in place on how to actually have a career. Um, okay. Learning online and, and from YouTube. Um, the great thing about this is you, you, you have like so many choices, right? There's a lot of choices out there. Um, and, and information is abundant. I mean, it's everywhere. There's, you name it, you can learn it online, right? Um, you can do it in your own time. You can do it, um, you know, uh, when, when it suits you. And it's very, very affordable. Um, a lot of times it's free. So the bad part is it's really hard to curate. It's very hard to, to know 
Who knows what? Do they actually know what they're talking about? You can waste a lot of time learning from somebody that's really teaching you a bunch of garbage. Um, and is it going to actually get you anywhere? Is, is, is it going to get you? Where's that program? Where's that you know, curriculum that, that has the steps that you need to actually get the career? Um, that is going to be you know, very difficult to find. Um, you also will have a hard time finding community um, or, or being able to interact with other artists. So you're sort of in a, in a, in a space where you're on your own. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a lot of issues, you know, in terms of quality and, and that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, isn't it great that we live in a time where you can learn online and, and no matter where you live, because not every community has a local community or has an art school mm -hmm. or, or has a way to connect. And so, you know, thank God for online learning. Um, so, um, you know, the, uh, the thing that we are, are really proud of with the mastery program and with the program that we've put in place for artists is it has the best of all these worlds. Uh, it has the best of a traditional art school. It has the best of, you know, a local in-person art school. And it has the best of online learning sort of all in one place. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we've um, started the school in person, and that's how we had the mastery program is we did it for years that way, and then we took it all online. So we've had the experience of working with people, like hands-on, face-to-face, what they find challenging about it, or like we've taken all those things and turned it into a recorded online class. Yeah, absolutely. And and um, what we learned from that and what Dimitra was talking about is we learned the importance of community and how important it is to build relationship, mm -hmm. to have mentorship, to have um, uh, people by your side you know, uh, uh, that are, that are all going in the same direction as you, they all want the same things, um, to be supportive, to be encouraging and to basically have that synergy and that beautiful creative, um, environment that, that you can grow in. And so, uh, community is, is really, really important. So we've made the mastery program affordable, accessible. It's an actual one year program that you can start at any level, whether you're a beginner or you're, or you're, you know, really far along in your artistic journey, you can start it. Uh, the first part is learning, uh, skills, uh, in oil and drawing, and then you learn your voice and how to develop your style and then how to, how to build a portfolio market and brand. And in the one year you've, you've learned and built the skills that you need, um, to be a professional artist. The other thing it does that I think a lot of schools miss is that it builds the stamina you need as an artist to be able to paint full time. Because and if you can paint 40 hours a week consistently, you, you have it made. Um, but to get to that point where you really can do that and build, uh, it, create quality paintings and have the ability to paint so many hours in a week, um, is, is really key. And so it sort of conditions you to do that because, uh, the program, if you go at the pace that it was designed, you paint 20 hours a week. So, uh, it's, it's, it's really fantastic on every level. Also the people that are teaching it. Uh, Dimitra and I, plus John teaches a little bit, uh, Jake te teaches uh, quite a bit in the marketing section uh, because he's, he's an extraordinary uh, person at marketing um, mm -hmm. and you want to learn from him. Uh, I learn from him all the time. Uh, you are learning from people who are doing it in real life. Uh, Jake learned uh, what he's learned in marketing by doing it. By, by taking a, a company and, and watching it grow at 30% or, or, you know, really like uh, uh, succeed with that and, and his marketing ideas, he's, he's done it. So then he can teach it. Uh, he's helped Dimitra in her business um, um, sell her art and market her art. And so with that firsthand knowledge, we've built our careers and we teach the things that we know that we've actually done. Uh, in my art school that I went to, in traditional art school, most of my teachers didn't even paint anymore, and they definitely didn't sell their artwork. Um, they were not uh, active professional artists teaching me from their personal experience. Uh, they were just teaching some, you know, college curriculum, and they were they were you know just holding a spot there. So, um, 
so the and and then in terms of the uh, the community, we have this amazing community on a uh, a platform uh, that's that's really conducive to building um, mm-hmm. uh, relationships. You can even see on the platform where you access your education, you can, at a click of a button, see what other artists uh, live near you. Mm-hmm. And, and it's so, so cool. easy to connect. We, we know artists that have uh, built lifelong friendships um, through this program because they've, and they've even visited each other, you know, in each other's countries. And you meet artists from all over the world. It's absolutely incredible. Um, Okay, so the first part of the program is step-by-step instruction, everything that you want to know about oil and oil painting and drawing. So this is classical uh, drawing. So you learn how to measure proportion, how to draw something accurately, uh, shading, everything from figures to botanicals to portraits to animals, still life. Uh, you, You draw it all. You learn how to do it. Lots of different drawing techniques. Uh, all based in classical, uh, traditional uh, um, drawing. Uh, you also learn oil painting. How So this part of the section is basically how to create realism. Uh, because from that base, once you know how to do realism, you can take off from that and abstract it or stylize it or do whatever you want with it. But I believe every artist has to have that foundation of, of realism. So you learn all kinds of oil painting techniques, uh, and by the end of this first section, you are an absolute pro at oil. Um, part two is mixed media. Yeah, this part is a lot of people's favorite because it's very expressive and kind of experimental. You're trying all these different techniques. Um, we really teach you any kind of mixed media material that we've had experience with. Um, so tons of different ways to um, play with mixed media, and you're just kind of developing your own um, techniques that you really love for your process. And this is a section that you learn your your voice. Yeah, so you, we really go in depth on, um, you know, finding things about your personal life, who you are, and translating that into your art. So you have like a message with your art and your art means something and you learn about symbolism and what kind of subject matter you want to paint, how to mix different things together to create a look that's uniquely yours and um, not just, you know, something you're doing as um, a default mode because you don't know any other way. So that's probably the biggest part of the whole program. And then part three Um, is kind of putting all that together, everything you've learned, and creating a portfolio that um, really showcases your style and just, you know, your your unique process. Yeah, absolutely. We also teach you in this section uh, professional habits um, and how to to actually build a business. What sort of attributes do you need? Things like time management um, and and how to how to set up your studio so that it can be prolific. You can be prolific and uh, and really a professional uh, artist, because there's a difference between how you work sort of as a hobbyist versus how you work as a professional. So we teach you all that. Uh, and then the fourth and final part of the program, uh, you're finishing out your portfolio and you're learning how to build a personal brand, how to uh, create all kinds of marketing collateral that you'll need in order to market and promote yourself. Uh, how to create a marketing strategy um, from everything from your website, social media, um, email marketing, um, uh, you know, um, building building basically a fan base that mm-hmm. rallies with you around your cause, your art, what you have to say, um, and really what you're putting out there, and and how to begin to monetize your product in a lot of different ways, whether that's from prints or creating products and how to market and sell those products, um, plus originals, of course. Um, and uh, finally, and very importantly, how to promote uh, yourself and your your product uh, and how to actually sell it and get it sold. And uh, how you finish the program is with a one-year marketing plan where you actually put on paper in writing uh, as if it was, as if you were going to take it to the bank, you know, like a a normal business plan um, and and get a loan. Of course, you don't need to do that, but uh, you put this together, it's all in writing, and then all you have to do to be successful is really follow your own marketing plan that we teach you how to put together. So it's really fantastic. Um, Tons of of artists have gone through this program 
and uh, and have really changed their lives by it. Uh, many of them have dumped their day jobs and are full time artists now. And you know, just uh, just this last week, we had one of our students. Uh, oh, I'll I'll show I'll show her in just a second. Um, so this is somebody that took the program and she said, I've sold over 10,000 worth of art since I started the program. Crazy. Uh, yeah, it's crazy because people sell their, sell their, uh, their assignments, you know, the artwork that they're doing in there as they go through the program. Um, because you paint a lot, you create a lot of artwork. And I'm mentoring someone right now who just started three weeks ago and her first uh, painting she did, she already sold it. Yeah. This is really incredible. Yeah. Um, here's somebody else. Um, so Michelle says um, that she learned a huge variety of styles and uh, her pieces are getting a lot of attention from people who are wanting to buy them. And she just started only recently. Um, here is someone that everyone around me has noticed an enormous improvement. Your skills just right from the beginning, absolutely mm -hmm. improve very, very quickly. Um, so here is somebody, I'm only in week three of the program and it's already changed my life. So cool. Um, my confidence in myself as an artist has grown immensely. Um, so this is, this is Tanya and she was just out here uh, uh, not even a week ago um, filming some things here um, to, to put on YouTube or, or as, as videos. Podcasts. Yeah, and podcasts and things like that. And she was telling me her story of how she... She, um, before she found the program, she was working in a grocery store and, you know, she had an interest in art and a passion for art, but she just didn't have a lot of skill, didn't really have anything put together, didn't have any belief that she could actually ever be a professional artist. And she thought, well, you know, I work in this grocery store and, you know, one day maybe I'll be the manager. And, um, and then she, you know, found the program and she joined the program, you know, with just basically a hope that maybe she could, she could one day be a professional artist, but she really just wanted to, to increase her skills and, and get involved in art. And she said that, um, it's funny, you know, she said that everybody around her in her town was telling her, oh, you know, this sounds like a scam. You, you can't make it as an artist. Nobody makes it as an artist. Don't fall for that. Um, but she joined the program and uh, by the time she graduated, and she did the whole program in one year, and by the time she graduated, she was selling so much artwork, she was able to quit her job and become a full-time artist. And that was uh, three years ago. So for the last three years, she works full-time as an artist. Uh, and she said she makes a lot more money now selling her art than she ever did working at the grocery store. Mm -hmm. So imagine that. What a life changer. Yeah. Right. To go from having to get up and go to work full time stocking shelves in a grocery store to being able to do what you love most every single day and sell your art and know that people value it and mm -hmm. and it and it affects them deeply. So um, there's so many things that you get with the mastery program. There's um, uh, there's a hundred plus bonus lessons that. Uh, that are um, separate from the mastery program. So the mastery program is a program, but you also have access to this, these bonus lessons. So these are things like how to paint eyelashes, uh, how to paint clouds, how you to know, paint just, water, how to yeah. paint water, just very like nitty gritty. Um, uh, you know, um, what do you call that? Just uh, shorter content, mm -hmm. like, yeah. like a 10 there, they range from like five to 20 minutes each, just a, yeah. And this specific, is, yeah, this is super exciting. You're, you're going to love this. So, um, you get that bonus content and then you have access to the pro library, which is in itself over a $1,200 value where you get uh, really high quality courses. Um, in addition to that, but this is the best part. Um, there are monthly contests where we give over $10,000 in prizes to the students. So anybody who is taking the mastery program, you submit your artwork that you're doing in your assignments and it's judged not always on how well it was done, but sometimes it's based on improvement or it's based on other criteria and you can win uh, cash money that you could put, you know, towards your tuition or paying bills or uh, art supplies, whatever you want. So we give over $10,000 in prizes every single month. I mean, that is incredible um, to 
And that's like one of the things we want to do in building community mm -hmm. and getting um, people, um, you know, uh, um, really involved in pushing themselves. Yeah, and, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, you can, um, you can, you can't join right now. It's not open. Registration isn't open until March 1st. So you can't join right now. Um, uh, registration will open March 1st uh, for three days. So you have from March 1st to March uh, 3rd, or is it 4th, 3rd, to, to join. Um, but right now you can join the wait list. Mm -hmm. So if you get on the wait list, um, uh, then you can get a free prep course. So this prep course is really, really great. Um, it will come to you through your emails. Um, also, you can uh, join the prep course on the platform, our app, uh, Milan Art. Uh, or app.milanart.com, and uh, you'll learn how to build an easel, how to manage your time, setting up your studio. Um, uh, there's right brain exercises. There's there's a lot of really cool content designed to help you get prepared uh, to to start the mastery program. And if you can't join March first, like just so if you're trying to plan ahead or something, we open registration on the first of every month. So we have like a short window. So people kind of join in groups and then in our community, you'll be, you know, surrounded by people. Yeah. yeah. With people who have kind of going through it at the same time as you. So, um, just to show you the different, uh, um, um, uh, packages, packages, <laughs> uh, the different, uh, tuitions. Um, so it's, uh, $3,600 for the whole mastery program, uh, which includes all those things I just talked about, the contests, um, uh, the pro library and the bonus content. It also includes, uh, group coaching. So you're not alone in this. Um, everybody who takes the mastery program, you get access to group coaching. So what that means is you go into a coaching group and you're with, uh, like Demetra said, your cohort. And um, so you get to know all the students. There are professional artists in there that have already gone through the program and are succeeding in their careers there to coach you. So what are they doing? They are giving you feedback on your artwork. You can post your assignments. Um, you'll get critique. You'll get feedback. There's weekly Zoom calls that you can participate in and live face-to-face -face with these coaches and the other students. Um, you can build relationship, get all your questions answered, uh, receive encouragement, um, and it's, it's really fantastic support. So uh, that is included uh, with your tuition. It doesn't cost anything extra. So uh, 3600 or you can break that up into 12 payments of $300. So it's very, very affordable. Um, uh, or you can, um, oops. Yeah, I just lost my thing. Okay. So, or you can, um, with, uh, uh, get the accelerator package, which is 5,600 a month or 500 a month. And that is everything I just said, but you also get a personal mentor. So that is a professional artist that's already gone through the program is already, uh, succeeding in their career. Uh, and you can message them every single day. So you're able to message them 24-7, um, and they will answer your questions, critique your artwork. Uh, you'll have this mentor all throughout the program, so you'll become quite close and good friends. And it, it's like having a professional artist in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, really fantastic. Um, and then the last option is... Um, Oh, okay. I guess it's sold out. So never mind. But it's um, it may come back in the future, right? But it's uh, thirteen thousand, and what that is is you get either me, your choice, me or Dimitra as your personal mentor. Um, so, um, but right now we only take a few artists yeah. because we're, you know, we can't. We want to give very good quality, and so we don't take on a lot of students at one time. Um, and uh, so that is. Uh, where we are your personal mentors, one of us. Um, okay, so um, so with group coaching and uh, the whole program, also, I didn't mention, you have lifetime access to this. So, mm -hmm. once, uh, uh, so once you've joined the mastery program, you have lifetime access, and you can participate in those contests really, you know, with your lifetime access. And... Um, uh, and so you'll have access to all the content um, if you want to revisit it. Uh, and, and we're constantly updating it and adding to it. So 
Uh, it's a really, really, I think, absolute no brainer, incredible, incredible deal. Um, so make sure that if this is something that you're interested in, that you get on the wait list. I'm sure um, Jake is putting the link in the chat um, and you can uh, join the wait list and get the, the prep course. And uh, it doesn't cost you anything. It's absolutely free um, to join the wait list and there's no obligation. So, uh, you know, we don't ask for your credit card or anything like that. You just simply get on the wait list. And what that does is it begins um, um, a process where you'll, you'll start getting emails with this content uh, from it. So um, if you guys have any questions about anything that we've talked about, um, any of the scams that we mentioned, or you have any questions regarding that, maybe, like I said in the beginning, you're going through something um, that you want to, you know, sort of, um, hear what, we, you know, our opinions on that are. Uh, we want to answer your questions right now. Maybe you have questions about the, the mastery program that we just talked about or some other art education uh, topics. So, um, Jake, do you have any questions? Okay, so, yes, we have several questions. Um, so, Susanna wanted to know what a real collector... Um, this was quite a while back, but um, back to the scam aspect of this um, and understanding, you know, what a real collector looks like um, when they're trying to buy your painting as opposed to a scam. If you guys That's could make that, yeah. make that comparison. Yeah. Um, so for me, like I do sell a lot of work through Instagram of people just messaging me and um they'll ask about a specific painting. They'll say, is this painting still available? I really love it. They might want to know the story behind it. Um, they might want to know if I do payment plans. That's like all normal conversation. And so I just, you know, to accept payment, I um, tell them they can send me a deposit or, you know, the full amount through either PayPal or um, that's really just the main one I use is PayPal because it's very safe and I have a business account. So if it was fraudulent or whatever, I can, um, or for whatever reason they want to return it, I can be protected. So, um, that's, I mean, I just have like a normal back and forth conversation and it's always someone interested in a very particular piece or commission. And then if they're interested in a commission, I'll send them my commission form um, that they fill out and then they'll send me money that way. But really when it comes down to the exchange part of it, just have like a set, you know, only few um, ways that you accept payment. And if you do it through your website, so having a website is really great for um, collectors to just go on there and, and uh, place an order. That's really like the safest way. And um, I haven't had, like usually I'll, I'll know right away yeah. in the wording of it or like if it's a scam or not. So, yeah. And almost a hundred percent of the time, maybe for you, it's, it's different, but for me, a hundred percent of the time when somebody's bought my artwork, they've actually been a follower. So, yeah. uh, the ones that are scammers, I'll, if I go and look at their profile, I can see they're not following me mm, and yeah. I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> You know, yeah, they're they're not real real art collectors, you know. And I've had someone recently who bought a pretty large painting, and they didn't have a profile picture. They um, were from another country, so it was they didn't have like perfect English. So like at first, I was kind of like, hmm, I'm gonna just walk this out. But they were asking about a specific painting. They wanted to know about payment plans. They wanted to know about deposit. When I sent them, here's my PayPal. You can pay me through here. It all worked out. And so, you know, it was a legit buyer. But so you can't always trust, like, you can't just judge based off their yeah. Instagram, really. That's um, and one of the main differences is a real collector is looking for you to lead mm -hmm. and a scammer That's will lead. That's a major, major, yeah. 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 So um, an art collector is is like, so how do I buy a piece? How, do, how does this happen? Mm -hmm. And you have to take the lead and say, okay, so, um, you know, go Here's, on my website, yeah. choose the piece. I'm going to send you, you just tell them the process. I'm going to send you a PayPal, uh, you know, uh, invoice or, you know, you can buy it off of my website. If they're like, oh, I don't have a credit card. I need to do a check or anything weird when you start talking about the transaction. Yeah. 
odds are, unfortunately, it's a scam. But sometimes with, you know, like wire transfers. Um, oh, yeah. That's like, especially for, for larger amounts of money, um, I've had to do that. Like they, some people in other countries, they can't pay with PayPal. They don't have a PayPal. So there are other ways to do it, but you just got to be careful. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Just don't accept their links and stuff. I know we um, went over a bit. It's like almost six, but. Um, some people were asking before if you could repeat the names of the good platforms, the ones that you recommend in terms of like online galleries or um, other good opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we were talking about like Saatchi and was it Singular Art? Um, yeah, what is that? U line sells cardboard. No, but it starts with a um, U. There's a there's a good gallery that starts yeah. with a U. Um, gosh, but Saatchi and like Singular Art are really big platforms and Fine Art America, but that's kind of more saturated with all like well, types of artists. The originals on Fine Art America are. Fine, you'll know who the buyer is, mm -hmm. but not um, not the prints. And then we said Etsy was a good one. If you have like you know prints or like smaller pieces, um, Etsy is a good platform. Starting There's out. a lot of online galleries that are that are good, um, and I just I just don't I'm not up on you know all of them. So um, you know, basically an online gallery is fine mm -hmm. because you're you, well. You're still not going to know who the buyer is, but that's normal. Like if you sell in a regular brick and mortar gallery, um, you're you're rarely going to know who the buyer is anyway. They that's their information. They don't want you to know that information. So that's pretty normal. But where you really want to watch that is like in the prints, like Society of Six, where they're sending out the prints. They're making the prints. You make ten percent, which is like two dollars sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just the tiniest amount, and. Um, and then you never know who's buying your print. So if you're only making a couple bucks off of a print, you at least want to know who the buyer is so that you can retarget them later for, you know, something else that you're selling. Yeah. And with Society of Six, I don't think you can really set your own prices either. You don't really have that freedom. So. Okay. Um, let's see. So Mad Nat wanted to know, how are we connected in the mastery program? So you are connected um, right here through, so through the app. Um, so this is where you access all of the content. This is where you access the mastery program. So you can either have an app um, that, that you, you know, download on your phone, or you can access it on your laptop or both. And so you create an account on this. You can create an account right now. It's, it's completely free and you can join you know, and be a part of the community and, um, you know, uh, meet all the students. You'll see a lot of students talking about the mastery program. Uh, it's a great way to get your questions answered from actual students. So you can go on there and, you know, message them or post and ask questions. Um, so it's, it's very open. And uh, the coaching group is really where you're going to meet other students. Um, and in that coaching group, it's, it's like a social media feed where you post your, your artwork, uh, every, you know, people comment, the coaches comment, you'll join the, the zoom calls, uh, where you'll see other students. Um, like I said, there's a, there's a place on the, the platform where you can at a push of a button under members, you can, you can see what members are near me. It says like members near me. And then it shows like you in the middle and then all the different people around you, uh, that live nearby you. Um, so there, you can message them. So there's a lot of great ways to connect. Um, and, um, and this is kind of like what it looks like. So, um, yeah. Are there any other questions, Jake? Um, Maybe like one more question. Yeah, so Sky wants to know, um, and I sort of already answered this in the chat, but I think it's good for you guys to answer too. Um, how much feedback mentoring, could you just talk a little bit more about the feedback and mentoring of each of the different levels yeah. in the mastery program? So the first package that's um, the essentials is group mentorship. So you'll be um, in this group where you know you have other mastery students, you're posting your work and you're gonna get feedback on anything you post in there from other mentors. So we have a group of several mentors who have 
um, who have careers and have gone through the program. They're really good at mentoring students. They'll be giving you feedback. Um, and then the, the next one up from that is the um, accelerator, and that's having a personal mentor. So that's much more in depth because you get to message that mentor on, um, we use Telegram right now, so you have a back and forth whenever you need it. You text them in the middle of your painting and say, I'm having a hard time right now doing this. They'll get back to you as soon as they can. And um, it's usually just a few hours, if that, or like right sometimes away, right yeah. away, if they're active. So um, you really have a lot more when you get the personal mentorship and you have a, a monthly Zoom call with your mentor, just the two of you privately. Um, and then uh, the Pioneers is just the exact same thing as that, but you'll have one of us. So I um, had a lot of fun with this workshop, and I hope that this was really helpful for you guys and that you learned a lot about, you know, the different types of scams out there, how to avoid it. And um, I think the main takeaway was really what you said about just kind of like your heart and where, wh what your mindset is about it all and mm -hmm. not being in that place where you are vulnerable to it, kind of like attracting it or, um, yeah, so... Um, that's really like the main thing, yeah. I think. Yeah. And we just want you to know that we really believe in you and that if you want to uh, be a professional artist, yes, there is no silver bullet that it's going to be an overnight thing. Um, but through your passion, your dedication, your commitment to doing what you love most and learning and growing your skills and having personal growth, finding your voice and learning how to market and sell your art. We absolutely believe in not too long of a time. Uh, for many people, it happens in a year. Uh, you can be a professional artist and work full time selling your artwork. So we absolutely believe in you. And what we believe most is that you are uh, totally in control of your destiny and, uh, and what you make of yourself is your choice. Uh, and I, I believe that uh, there's greatness within you that you absolutely are a culture shifter, a world changer. Your art is powerful uh, and the world needs to see your art. Mm -hmm. And we wanna see you lift your voice and um, really uh, um, put your artwork out there for the whole world to enjoy and be affected by it. And we wanna help you get there. We wanna help you do that. So uh, join the wait list and uh, get that prep course um, and uh, I hope to see you in the mastery program um, and on the app, uh, Milan Art. And um, yeah, we're super excited for you. So hopefully this was really inspiring and beneficial. Um, and uh, we will see you next time.